Okay. So hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Public Weekly Meeting. Uh, we are on the 29th of March, 2022. Today we have Mark Waite, Stefan Merle, Tim Yacomb, and Hervé Lemur, who just joined, and Damien here. Um, announcement. So we have a weekly release, which is not released yet because uh, I'm the culprit. I merged the change this morning without thinking that restarted release.ci. And of course, it wasn't able to, to start what it stopped. So I've triggered a manual build. Um, I'm going to follow up to see if it fails, but nothing else should be merged. So I, I broke it. I'm responsible to, to ensure that it goes uh, to full uh, the, to full packaging. Yeah, and I checked it just minutes ago, Damien, and it's mm -hmm. 90 minutes into its two hour process. So I see nothing, it's it's in the, the build release phase. So about 30 minutes okay. from now, it should apply the label or apply the tag, push, et cetera. So uh, I'm not overly worried about it. And if you mm -hmm. want, you, we could give in the late hour of the day, just plan that I'll run the release checklist after it's done and, and dot the I's and cross the T's. Okay. So let's see how it's behave. Another announcement that, um, so what's the number of the release? I thought it was 2041, correct? 341. 341, thanks. Um, there is a plugin advisory that should be published in a few minutes if it's not already the case. I haven't seen any message, so it's currently running. Yeah, it's, it's actually been published. So the plugin advisory is published. Whoops, I'm in the wrong Oops. location. No problem, advisory, okay. Okay, so directly on Jenkins IO, cool. Um, where's the advisory? About security, so top right, about, yeah, there we go, advisories. Nice, thanks. Okay, are there other announcements? Um, let's see, we've got an LTS coming and the new Ildefonso is the release lead, right? I don't know that we need to announce that there, but um, the release candidate, so the 2.332.1 or .2 LTS release candidate is available for testing. Okay. Available for testing. And I've found no problems in the last week of testing I've been running on or three or four days of testing I've run on. Cool. Do we have a timeline or yet or not? We do. It's on the it's on the calendar. Just a minute. Let me. Okay. I haven't checked the calendar. Yeah, well, and I, I should have had it on in mind. Just a moment. I can read it really quickly. It is the sixth of April, so April six. Okay. Good to know. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we still have a meeting before that LTS. So that will be the Wednesday after our next meeting, right? Right, correct. Okay, thanks, Mark. Okay, for you, if we proceed, proceed. Yes, actually, the next item on the on the notes list is an announcement that needs discussion. So I, I'm I'm thoroughly jazzed mm -hmm. about this when Tim brings it. Yep, so that is um, something that Jan and I have been working on um, over the last few weeks called the design library. Um, it's basically a rewrite of the UI samples plugin um, to showcase um, all the UI components and provide guidelines on how they should be used. Um, but it doesn't really fit on Jenkins.io because it's dynamic. It uses, it renders the jelly components and everything. Um, so I actually need to run in Jenkins instance um, 
everything that it needs at the moment is released and well is getting released in the current weekly but we'd like a place that we can um, link people to from um, documentation from, from Jenkins.io um, and lay in the mailing list and whatnot just to um, send it out to people so that they can try it out and see it um, the goal eventually hopefully that ci.jenkins.io would do that but given it requires the latest weekly version that wouldn't be practical. I feel like we'll get a much better uptake and usage if um, we've got a service that we can send out. Yeah. Um, so there was two ideas, one which was just a temporary service called designlibrary.jenkins.io, which is just a, um, a Jenkins with nothing else on it really other than the design library. And then there was another one that um, Mark and Alex had, which was um, to create a weekly.ci.jinx.io, which just runs the latest weekly publicly so you can see what it looks like. And I don't know whether it would run jobs or just have some example jobs or something, I don't know. Um, but just to show what the current weekly looks like. Yeah, I've Tim, I've, I'm impressed. I installed it just this morning and uh, what a nice piece of work that design library is. Uh, I, I, I think we do want to put weekly, we already have weekly running in one of our CI servers and whether it's yep. design library and we accept it's temporary or, or we do something a little more permanent, I think, I think it's healthy for the organization to consider, let's have something available that is publicly visible, secured, offers, uses the Jenkins LDAP and has weekly installed on it. This instance uh, would need uh, wouldn't need a lot of resources anyway, since it no. would run only design library. Well, no. so I might ask for it to have at least one Windows agent and one Linux agent, just so that it could it could run some some set of interesting jobs. But other than that, I agree it's it's very light, and and maybe it doesn't even need those. It just for me, if it's got a, access to a Windows agent, even if it's if it's purely ephemeral. Tim, am I, maybe I'm wrong there because if it were just design library, the design library certainly doesn't require agents, does it at all? No, 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 it doesn't. But if, if you want to have some jobs, some weekly just as examples of some different types of jobs, it would be fine. But I mean, I'd start Damn small. Muted, uh, Damien. Sorry, <laughs> uh, that's a nice idea. Um, since we already have Infra CI, that will be a public available instance hosted on Kubernetes with ephemeral agents, either Kube and, and or AWS machine as for now. Uh, does it sound good for you? Because yep. that will be almost the same configuration as Infra CI, except we install it on the public cluster instead of private. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't see any blockers on that. It's more, yeah, for the naming weekly design library. Hmm. Yeah, uh, oh, 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 let, let, Stefan Hervé, are you more prone to a uh, temporary instance only for the design library feature and then we dump it? or to have something a bit more permanent that will be the weekly or preview or something? I think a permanent, a more permanent one would be way better because that's, that will show how it's uh, evoluting, evolving. Yeah, but there, there is a cost associated. Yeah, but that's almost nothing, no? It's just one VM. Um, yeah, with two gigabytes and for the CPU. So not a virtual oh, machine. Okay. That yeah, won't just, be a virtual machine for sure. It just run on Kubernetes. With, it yes. shouldn't need many resources at all. Like 500 megs of memory and half a CPU or something. Mm, what, okay. or, less, one, or less. One, C, one CPU, two gigabyte. If you go under, that might be tricky because, uh, because of the sidecar and the way plugins are loaded. Yeah. Going under is, yeah. The, the cost difference won't be that much. Um, sure. the, cost, the cost will come from the agents mostly. Yeah, and, and if we don't put much work on it, 
Right now, mm -hmm. its purpose, its initial purpose is just is Caribbean. just to be the host for design library, right? And then if we decide, oh, we want a sample job or two or three, okay, we put some lightweight job on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking, what do you think about a preview.ci.jenkins.io? So it's not strictly tied to design library or weekly. It could be used for um, a, a release candidates of LTS as well in the future or whatever usage, mm -hmm. but that might be too much usage for a single. Yeah. I thought about that for release candidates, but release candidates track LTS line. Yeah, yeah it would so be going we, backwards in time if we tried to, to. Yeah, correct. So weekly or design library. And, and my, my, I've thought about preview and, and wondered people when they see that it's running weekly may, may, may misperceive that weekly is a preview because weekly is not a preview. Weekly is mm. ready to use. It just happens to be released every week. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, Mark, but for me, weekly is AG or preview. I'm sorry, I cannot say weekly is stable, but that, nah. as a user, we have it, we update it every week, and no, no, it's, it's yeah, I, I can. I'm on, I'm on the latest weekly at work, large production system. <laughs> You like to leave them closely. <laughs> best tester ever. And the age. Um, okay, but w w uh, yeah, I'm inclined. I, I vote for weekly as well. So it seems like four, four to one. Okay. That, that can be always changed. That's not that much. It's a configuration yeah. on the DNS. The rest is only configuration on Helm. Um, Tim, do you mind opening an help desk issue so we can start tracking it as soon as it's opened? Yeah, just to open. have a, and as soon as we have the help desk issue, we we jump on it. Okay, you've got a you've got an issue. Oh, good. Good. I've got more than one issue. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so jump on it. It's open. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, as soon as possible, and then uh, Tim, you can uh, either uh, walk with us to add it, but yeah. The, the the first the, the the most easier uh, we can take it uh, you can start it that will be installing a, a new release on the prod public gates. Yeah, it depends on how long it will be till someone could pick it up. I probably won't touch it in the next couple of days, but I can do mm -hmm. it later on if it's if someone doesn't get a chance. Yeah, the, let, let's go that way. The, um, so for everyone, the first person that has free time and wants to work on that must absolutely think about allocating the issue to themselves so the other knows someone started to work on it and right. eventually comment it just to be sure so we can work asynchronously. Sounds good for you? Yes. Sounds good. Yep. Okay. Are there any other questions that need to be discussed on that topic? Cool, let's go. Thanks for the work, team. The right. library is impressive. Okay, so what did we do this week? So we have a lot uh, of long running tasks. So we only closed the one, one task. There has been a few in the desk closed. So thanks for everyone who closing these issues on, on the fly. Um, so Hervé solved an issue with uh, uh, the account application and Tim, thanks for helping there also. So it looks like that, uh, that account application wasn't able to connect to the LDAP, different error. Um, so I'm sorry, but this, the solution is to delete the pods, e.g. restarting the application. That works very well. Uh, if anyone is able to be to compile the application on the machine, they are, free. They are totally free and they can try uh, fixing the issues. But honestly, uh, that service is just. I tried to. Yeah. I tried to just do some minimal patching on it. It doesn't build on my machine. Like, yeah, it's using ancient Gradle with some ancient Jetty plugin, which doesn't exist anymore. Um, I, I mean, it's using Jelly as well. Who is using Jelly today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bigger problem is the um, the Jetty plugin that it uses and in, built into Gradle, um, and so to. Get it working you need to 
port it to an embedded JD container and just rewrite a whole bunch of stuff. And I spent 15 minutes on it and then said, screw this, why aren't we using a, a better solution? So yeah, so that's why um, I would restarting <laughs> better to, so as a reminder, we will want to have Keycloak or the tool that Gavin pointed to us, but we need a tool to be able to manage the account on the LDAP. Both tools are, are looks like okay. Um, but in, in order to have these tools installed and used definitively, we need the migration to the private cluster to be done first. That's a, re, a strong requirement in terms of networks. So that's why we need to restart as a temporary measure for now. Looks good. So the current work, we have rating the Jenkins IO migration to Azure. I'm taking on the order on the milestone, right? So um, Stefan worked on that topic. Is uh, driving the topic. So we were able to uh, add a managed PostgreSQL database. Thanks team for the insight about the flexible instances. Uh, we weren't aware uh, on that. So we now have a full Terraform managed Azure with management of network and everything. So going in the correct direction. Um, now the next step, Stefan is currently working on that since uh, noon today. Uh, installing the Helm chart for ratings Jenkins CI that Jeremy played out and Gavin worked on, which is already available on our Helm chart. So now we have to install it and wire everything together. Once that part will have been done, we'll have to import the data from the old database and then switch to DNS. And boom. Boom. <laughs> is there any question on that topic? Okay, so that topic is a work in progress. So I'm migrating it to a next week a milestone. Yep. Okay, uh, next one, apply to Docker open source program, which is closely related to Docker Hub credential for VM agent. So last week we had rate limits. We need to ask the Docker uh, open source program if they can extend their uh, the current sponsoring they are doing for us on the Jenkins uh, Docker Hub account. If we can extend it to one or two technical accounts that we could use in the infrastructure. The main idea is uh, we will want to be able to use, um, to, to increase the rate limit of a single account. And ideally have an account that is only used for pooling images. So we can safely share, even with read-only token, we could safely share uh, this credential and not being burned by the API rate limit. So that task is on me. I have to contact them based on the information that Olivier gave us uh, in the uh, past few days. All right, which is one, okay. On the area of the Docker Hub uh, rate limits, uh, so there is also a pipeline library pull request by Stefan uh, and Hervé uh, that try to map two credentials per uh, Jenkins instance that we host, one for pull and one for push. So we are currently creating the accounts, creating the API token on each account. So the password cannot be used and we can recycle the token. We have two level of uh, credential then. Uh, some already exists. And that library will keep using by with the whole syntax that we currently use, we'll keep using the push credential to not break the release capability. That library has been paused because of the weekly release and the security advisory of today. So we should continue working on that on the upcoming days. It doesn't include the modulo yet, the idea of uh, for a given build on CI Jenkins IO, spreading randomly between two, three or more accounts. That's the first step now to be able to deploy, to see how we could cover the cases. And if the API rate limit come again, we can start spreading many on CI Jenkins IO. Any question on that topic? No. Okay, so that one, um, that one has to migrate. Email alias for the press. So for, for this one, we haven't heard from KK. Um, I'll make the migration uh, from my storm if you want to continue. Oh, cool. Thanks a lot. 
So for the email alias for press, we haven't heard back from KK. Um, Mark, do, uh, do you mind to contacting KK directly? Usually he tend to respond to you. <laughs> sure, I'll ask, yeah. Otherwise, uh, as we said last week, uh, we are going to contact directly Mailgun to see what is the procedure, if they still have an account, or worst case, if they can just give us the emails. I'm not sure if that would happen. Uh, but I, I, will want... I don't think there's any in use. Like we, don't, we, don't use, we don't. So what would these be used for? Uh, the question is, what are the existing email in something at Jenkins IO that already exists? We weren't able to extract them from the GitHub history. And Tyler and Olivier weren't able to tell us which ones. So Tyler are, says are you they should aware contact of any? That I don't know. Yeah. There is the MX. The thing is that if we move the MX, that will be the worst case. We move it to whatever email system sounds like Linux Foundation has spared the tickets. But yeah, we, we need to be sure that we need to have a catch them all then. So yeah, let's let's ask KK yeah. at least to be able to reach Melgun and see the list of email and then move away. You can ask him, but I, I, I doubt there's anything in use these days. Like, Send grids have been used for election campaigns before, but no, I'm not yep. aware of Mailgun at all in, in years. So, yeah, and if Tyler isn't aware of the Mailgun, that means it's, it's really, really old. And no one's sending emails to Jenkins Tyro. So, unless it's something for KK himself, I don't think it's a thing, but double check with him, but I wouldn't worry too much. Oh, I, don't worry. Yep. I think it's perfectly okay if we set ourselves a timeout. If we don't get an answer in a week or two, we just proceed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, the risk mm -hmm. seems very low. So is it okay? Last week, we said this week has timeout for contacting Melgan. But I propose we extend one week just to be sure if direct communication. Just that to be sure that we can close uh, safely. Mm -hmm. Worst case, we do. Sounds good for you? Yes. Uh, next topic, uh, GC, AWS, and old image. So that one was a minor one. I don't think uh, you had time for that, uh, Stefan. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. We don't <laughs> have time. We don't have time. There were more important topics. Um, do you think you will be able to work on it next week, or do you think that might be too much, uh, given oh, we yeah. have a rating and pipeline library? I'm not sure we'll be able, but I'd like to, because it's nice. Okay, so just don't don't overcommit on. I'd on like topic. to. I will do okay. my best. Oh, I, I I don't. I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready. Um, define credential at folder jobs level instead of Jenkins instance. So the goal is to have a way to use infras code to avoid having credential on top level of a Jenkins instance. Uh, so the current status. I'm able using my uh, custom homemade uh, Helm template, I'm able to convert a set of YAML definition into something that's generate valid job DSL with credential at folder or multi-branch level. Um, and it sounds like that if you create a config map on a Jenkins and chart deployment with the correct annotation, the system that search for the config maps dynamically, if you use the correct annotation, will get it. So I was successfully, I just did it successfully uh, one hour ago. So I'm pretty confident that for our infra CI and release CI, we should be able to have a custom made M chart that use the official Jenkins M chart and apply the configuration directly for now. Because my template is not perfect, it doesn't cover GitHub organization scanning and some kind of plugins. So right now I propose that we start with this one. And after a few weeks of usage, we can start uh, opening the topic for contribution on the official Jenkins help chart. Given that it involves a job DSL and there were some job DSL uh, uh, dead pull requests or rotting pull requests since one year that I mentioned on the issue, uh, thanks, Tim, for for adding at least the label and pushing back on that. I will contact the maintainer uh, because some of the credential needs to job DSL to manipulate the XML configuration. So that's a bit of a trash fire, and it sounds like 
I understand that we need to update some things on some plugin to be to have job DSL able to provide an easy syntax for that. So let's start this one because it's blocking uh, two other pull requests. Uh, so right now I'm focusing a, a lot on that. I should be successful tomorrow. So as um, if it's okay for everyone, I plan to do the first deployment on InfraCI during the day tomorrow, unless there is an important task to run on InfraCI. I'll send a message on IRC, but that means that all the jobs will be failing because I will totally destroy InfraCI in the process. I cannot guarantee continuity on that service until it's fully done. So yeah, that will slow down our ability to deploy uh, on Terraform, Docker images. So that's right. why I'm, I prefer asking if there is something important to deliver tomorrow for you. Nothing that I think of. Yeah, no. Nothing that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, now, InfraCost. So, Hervé, do you want to explain it or? Yeah, I can. Yeah. So, right. uh, can you open the issue? So, uh, I will get uh, the InfraMD on my screen too. Uh, so, I've. Um, I'm trying to implement uh, InfraCost, which is a tool to report estimated cost uh, uh, when there are change in Terraform uh, repository. Uh, for now, uh, it can uh, estimate uh, Azure, AWS, and uh, Google Cloud. So um, the they have a main uh, method of uh, estimating the cost uh, from the Terraform plan. So uh, we decide to, to implement this method only on uh, Azure, uh, since uh, AWS uh, has uh, sensitive uh, secrets like uh, SOFs or others. And uh, joining their uh, Slack community, I've uh, noticed uh, we can also use an experimental uh, feature um, allowing us to estimate cost from, uh, from the H H uh, HCL file directly. So no access to the plan and uh, no access to any secret or sensitive value. I've uh, implemented it on uh, AWS and um, also want to add it on Azure too. So we can uh, compare the discrepancy uh, between the two methods. Um, the InfraCost uh, engineer uh, tell me that it, they were unsure uh, uh, the result will be exactly the same. So it's experimental for now. But uh, yeah, in my pull request has been merged and uh, we have to see on the next uh, Azure on uh, AWS uh, pull request to see the results and the reports. Um, AfraCost uh, is uh, a SaaS, but can also be uh, self-hosted if we want or need. And uh, their uh, documentation uh, um, have example for a lot of uh, CI/CD, and their um, Jenkins uh, um, example repository uh, doesn't have uh, any real example, so we could uh, we will be able to propose them uh, our uh, integration as example later. Thanks, Hervé. Um, I just realized that we might have inverted AWS and Azure because we don't have any Terraform sensitive uh, outputs uh, on the AWS Terraform project. While okay. since this morning, we have on the Azure project, we have the output that exports the database. Uh, uh, so the sensitive outputs are stored inside the plan. That means we cannot be totally sure that uh, uh, this data could not be exfiltrated to their SAS. Uh, 
So that's why we say the, maybe on some, hence the HCL uh, change. So we might have to change the pipeline library, but the impact is not that much because it's only the database for rating that we just mentioned earlier. So the impact is really slow. That's why we selected Azure initially. Especially because it's empty right now. Exactly. And we can and we will rotate the credential uh, before exactly. going to production. On their Jenkins example, empty. But thanks, that's really nice in Fracost. So let's continue working on that. Uh, let's see the first results. We might have some incoming uh, Azure uh, thing. Next topic, unless there is a question. Cool. Uh, Hervé, you also worked on uh, Git setting colon pass on the Windows machines. So the status, uh, you solved the issue in short term. Uh, were you able to confirm with the people uh, who opened the issue? No. Uh, so that, that's the thing. But, OK, but since James has uh, approved your pipeline library fix uh, last week, I assume that it should be OK. Uh, could you just check in private on the CloudBees channels? Um, because remember, the, there were only two persons from CloudBees. Uh, so on the, the virtual machines agent, we already have. And there is a pull request on the uh, containers. So uh, the thing is that we, di we discussed. So unless I missed something, Hervé, can you confirm? Now we have a task a long running task that will be building our own Windows Docker images on, for the infrastructure for CI Jenkins IO instead of relying on the, uh, the community images. So we will, uh, we will build on top of the community image and we will add our own settings because sometimes we want some settings like the Linux image currently, same for Windows. We will want to have some specific settings on our images that would impact the, uh, the image if we contribute. So hence, we need to be able to build Windows Docker container on InfraCI. Stefan did all the EV work about providing Windows machines with Docker. We have the agents that run on EC2 ephemeral agents. So Hervé, if you're OK to take that task, you can start building the two uh, GDK 8 and 11 Docker images. Uh, but on our own repository. Yes. Is there any other question on that topic? On, no. the, on the long term, I, I, I want to propose an objectively manifest in uh, Jenkins key uh, 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 repository for this image, so they, they can be uh, kept uh, up to date uh, mm -hmm. more frequently. Yep, that will be a huge help. I didn't oh. understood the uh, team, uh, uh, the revert uh, of the uh, release number in the pipeline. I, I've asked you in a commit, I don't remember, I don't know if you remember it, um let me uh, try to find the link uh, is this this one the the three two eight that i've put nine that i've put there right um sure. this one oh it's on docker inbound agent on jenkins ci i've put it in the chat Um, so that one is um, Docker inbound agent built, is built on top of Docker agent. Um, so it uses a release version of Docker agent. So if you go to the Docker agent release um, in GitHub, uh, Damien. Mm -hmm. Currently. Not, no, not this one. Uh, Docker agent, not Docker inbound agent. So you'll see it's got 413-1, but if you see the one below it, it's 411 5 um, so that number there is if we ever need to build against a newer version of Docker agent from Docker inbound agent, that um, version needs to be bumped. It's normally one, but occasionally um, we build against a newer version. Oh. So, so the, le the left-hand side is remoting and the right-hand side is the 
image version. It's, yeah, so it's the last digit we considered. Yeah. When it's uh, uh, going from four to one, okay, I understand. Yeah, there's, now. there's two components to the version number. One is the oh, remoting okay. version, and two is the build okay. version, kind of. Okay, that's okay. It's like the package increase number when you build a package when you yeah, tie the version scheme okay. to the application. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of manually managed because it's the kind of unrelated images. Um, it can be managed by update CLI, but apart from that, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hervé, another thing is that we are dealing with a Windows uh, container, and hmm. Docker Bake and Docker Buildings aren't able to use Docker yeah. Bake. And this is uh, when I looked at how it was done, I saw there were two way of doing the image, one from Linux with yes. the Docker uh, and uh, the other with a completely different script. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I suspect the Windows ones don't, <laughs> aren't getting bumped. I th yeah, that's so, why yeah. I, I, <laughs> I wanted to bump, to make a pair uh, for this, but then I've... It's probably, that, probably that hard coded be, to one. Yeah. Uh, that will be, uh, so the update CLI manifest there will be a nice contribution to keep all the images up to date at the same time. Yeah, yeah. just create like a properties file at the root or something that both yeah, Windows exactly. and Linux can read. Uh, update CLI also manage if you have two files, one for Windows and one for Linux that are different, it doesn't care. It can update both from the same source, so. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. That's yes. um, good point. Hervé, I assume the scaleway cluster should be delayed? Yep. Um, we have to contact uh, scaleway to ask them. Yes, exactly. On account. So, uh, yeah. I, um, and uh, we have the monitor build on our private instance. Uh, so that's something that came from Daniel. Uh, that's an idea of, um, to be sure that we monitor on trusted CI when some of the most important builds are failing. So we already have something like this for the update center. We have the Datadog monitor that check the last build time of the JSON generated by the update center. And if it's, if it's more than one hour or two hours, I don't remember, then it will start sending uh, alerts and at a certain threshold will start page, page UTS. Uh, so that will be the same idea, having an external regular process, they will check a JSON file somewhere. And Daniel said, okay, um, we should have a cron job on that instance, could be the same for release CI though, um, that will export a JSON file with only a strict subset of information. Why not using GitHub check or notification? It's because trusted should be a private instance that should not exfiltrate any data as much as possible. That's the reason. So Daniel said that should be a, uh, quite easy to implement since we're already doing it. If we can't, we can still ask him to help us. As uh, had had it been considered another approach, possibly just exporting the RSS, somehow copy the RSS feed mm -hmm. from from an inside the VPN to another location. We could then monitor mm -hmm. it with an RSS reader. I, I yes. do that with ci.jenkins.io, and I admit it, okay. I, don't, I don't think anything is being exfiltrated from the RSS feed, right? As far as I know, there's nothing sensitive in those except the existence of the job and whether it passed or failed. Mm -hmm. that, that could be a nice one. And it, the only mandatory part is an external system that monitor the right. last time. We, we yeah. have to have some, some web server that, well, I'll, I'll, I'll reply to this one because I, I Thanks for highlighting it, Damien. I think it's worth a reply to have a conversation with Daniel. He may know a reason why RSS is a bad choice. Yep. W would you be able to, to help us on that part, Mark? Because I don't feel at ease with the RSS feed on Jenkins. Yes, yeah. I, at least I can, I can talk about how I use it mm -hmm. and, and why that, that has helped me. And then, then we can decide, is that, is that an interesting technique yep. or not? And if it is, then if you are able to share what you did, then we can take over at uh, that time. Sounds good for you? Okay. Yes. Let me just assign it to you and change the milestone then. And we will change Assigny as soon as we have more answers. Thanks, Mark.
So I think we have, oh no, uh, so scale where I'm removing the milestone. Can close this week, my, uh, yeah, this week milestone. Um, there were two other topics. The first one from our chair here. So uh, uh, they, uh, they bumped us about if we're able to evaluate the security requirements. We haven't had that time, but yeah, I understand they won't have any bandwidth until the 14th. So, so we probably owe Tim an explanation. This is one, Tim, that I launched an exercise, didn't invite you to the invitation on, on a session. Archera is a company that does an AI-based um, cost optimization of cloud resources. And they offered a, 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 a free and, hey, we'll support your open source project effort to the Jenkins project that we started a conversation with them. So sorry that this is a, a, a new one for you, I'm sure, but what it was was a an exercise. Is there a way to get somebody who could help predict, help us with finding cheaper ways to do what we're doing on Jenkins.io? And they've got some techniques that they were interested in. And the permissions they were requesting looked pretty simple and safe, but we don't we don't want to do anything with it until the security teams told us, yes, that's simple enough and safe enough. Okay. Don't say the words too loud because my YouTube ads got stuck with infra cost for cloud and Kubernetes for weeks and it got very annoying watching my, <laughs> watching my YouTube videos and constantly getting the same infra cost case study glared at me all the time. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, I, I will, all right. I will, I will try to not use that word too frequently lest it suddenly get, get kicked in. Thanks. So my proposal is that we start uh, sending requirements to the security officer uh, around the 13th, 14th, not because of our area date, but because uh, I know that Vadek is more than busy until the 12th included. Right. Uh, so yeah, that, that makes good. That makes sense, Damien. We I think. might have to take a slot on the availability agenda. Yep. yep. And uh, if it's okay, I will take care of uh, synchronizing with Vadek on that and sending them, unless someone wants to. Okay. One, two, okay, go. Um, Hervé on Digital Ocean. So it seems like that uh, we have or used half of the credits. Yeah. And uh, we currently consume about uh, one, thousand dollars per month. So we might need to contact them to see if they are okay to sponsoring us uh, yeah. more. That needs, we must absolutely prioritize writing a blog post and adding their logo on our website before oh, asking them for donation. Actually, that's a great, great excuse. And so I thought we had their logo already, but if not, that's an easy no. one. But so logo on the website because we it's a this is a great story to tell yeah okay. Uh, so who is going to to share the burden to write down the blog post? I can try, but uh, I'd like some help if possible. How about how about Mark and Erve together? Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Alex. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't ready yet. Minazer. We could ask Tim, but <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's pretending not to hear us. Yeah. Yeah. Digital, digital no, ocean sponsoring. No, Tim. This is this. This is just you're being teased. <laughs> Ignore that. That was yeah. not. That was a completely unfair shot. Yes, that's we the CD fringe. I heard. <laughs> I heard that we were volunteering, um, Stephanie, to um, oh. write a blog post on DigitalOcean. Yeah, that, that's good. Stephanie in French is the female name, so it's, it's okay. It's not me. <laughs> Stefan. All right. Okay. We'll find, a Stephanie. We'll find a Stephanie for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, folks. I think we have reached the list of topics. Do you have other topics additionally, just in case, important things to know, unavailability? No? 
Okay, so I hope everyone will continue to take care of themselves and that we can continue to take care of the infrastructure. Have a nice day, have a nice week and see you next week. All right. Bye.